Yeah, hello, can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, sorry, my, uh, I was, um, I'm switching it to my laptop just to minimize the lag a little bit. Um, so I accidentally closed Discord. Okay. 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 So, uh, do you guys remember last time we started off on, uh, or we ended off on the dictionaries, right? Um, so, okay, we're going to continue on with that lesson. Sorry, one second. I'm just going to go ahead and get onto this. Okay, so let's continue. So uh, we're gonna so dictionaries. Remember, uh, sets were declared with the curly brackets. Well, um, dictionaries are gonna be the same thing. So let's just create a dictionary quickly, right? So we're gonna say grades, and we'll have name. So we'll just say right. We'll have Jimmy. We'll have uh, Jill. Um, and then. Timmy and I don't know uh, John or something, right? Uh, so now what we can do is we can so uh, the point of a dictionary is to have uh, a key and a value, right? So you're gonna have uh, one item that's a key and one item that's a value. So th these items are our keys, right? So the values are gonna be the next item. So we'll say that uh, Jimmy has uh, 0.9 or 90 percent, right? Uh, Jill has uh, 95%, uh, Timmy has uh, 78, right? Uh, and we'll say John has 99%, okay. Uh, okay, 99%, okay. So you'll see that now we've declared our, um, we've created our dictionary. So each key, the keys are this uh, Jimmy, Jill, Miss Timmy, yeah, those are all um, going to be our. Those are all going to be our keys, and the values are these numbers right here. That those are the grades that correspond. So we can index these, right? So we're going to say grades, and then in here you put the name of the thing, right? So, uh, for example, if I want to get Jimmy's grade, right, then I will just type in Jimmy, and it will give me that 0.9, right? Uh, I can do. Uh, then I can also like just uh, print them out, right? So if I just print out grades, right, it'll give me the grade. Um, I mean, it'll give me all those, uh, that whole list. Uh, then you can also reassign this way. So if I say grades, um, uh, grade. So if I want to raise, say I want to take Timmy's grade and I want to raise it by, um, like, I don't know, 5%, right? So 0. Point, or I'll just say plus equals. So plus equals basically means that you take this grade right here and you, you take this value and you're going to add this amount to this value. So you'll see in a second. So if I add, uh, right, so 5%, so 0 0.05. Basically what this means is I'm going to take Timmy's grade, right, that's this thing on the, on the left side, and I'm going to add 0 0.05 to that, right? So now if I print out, uh, if I get uh, Timmy's grade, right, uh, I'll get uh, 0.83, right? Uh, which is which makes sense. There's gonna be like a like you see this tiny little number uh, That's just um, a result of the uh, like s slight uh, Bit of um, Sorry one second Okay so yeah, okay, that's just uh, like some extra noise that sometimes gets ad added in. Uh, it shouldn't really normally happen, but anyways. Okay, so now we're gonna, okay, so now that's basically all of the dictionary, uh, all the data types for now, right? Uh, we'll have more later. Uh, so just quickly to review, right? We have 
gone over all the numerical data types. So we have ints like five or something, right? You can do all the different operators with them. Uh, like uh, that should be zero, right? Uh, so those and then floats like I don't know, fifteen point five or something like that, right? Um, then we have um, strings, right? So you can do like a hello. You can do it with a single quote, like you can see right here. It does a single quote. Um, okay. Then we have um, uh, you have all the operators with the strings. Again, if you don't remember this stuff, you can go back to the previous lesson in video, or you can look at the uh, script. Actually, if I go ahead and just move that right here, this is the script I'm looking off of. Um, so basically, this is uh, this is what I'm looking at. You guys can look at this too. It's posted on our website. Um, okay, so if I just put this back over there. Uh, okay, and then so we covered strings, then we went over the iterables, right? So lists, right? So you can do like this. Um, then you have your, you can index that as well, right? Uh, then there were tuples, right? So these are immutable lists, meaning that you can't change the value of them after it's set, right? So if I say a equals one, two, three, right? Uh, I can't go back and say a of zero equals, I don't know, two or something, right? See, it says tuple object does not support item assignment. So um, can't change those. Uh, sets, remember there's a, so sets, I can do like one, two, three, three. But if I, you see how it uh, combines the threes into one, right? So uh, you can only have one of each element in the sets. Um, and then of course there's more functions and everything. Uh, you can watch the last video for that. Uh, dictionaries we just covered right now, right? So same. It's so the brackets are the same as uh, as li um, sorry sets, right? But uh, you're gonna have a key and a value, right? So um, again, like a point. I don't know. I'll just stick, stick with that for now. Uh, so yeah, there you go, like that. Okay. So now um, you can also go ahead and take input from. Uh, you can also take input from. The, uh, you can also take input from the user, right? So sometimes you might want to ask the user a question or something, right? So I'm gonna clear the screen. And so, okay, let's just say I wanna have a variable called name and I wanna figure out what the user's name is, right? So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and say, um, I'll go ahead and say uh, input and in here. So input is a function that's built into Python, right? Uh, so you can use this in order to uh, you can use this in order to take input from the user basically right just as it sounds um, and so it'll return a string it always returns a string right uh, you might if you want to take in a different input I'll show you how to do that in a second but um, for now let's just look at strings right so inside of the input function you're gonna put um, whatever question you want to ask so in this case we're asking for the name so what is your name right so once I do that, you'll see that it um, asks me, right, what, what is my name? So I'll just input Rahi, and so now if I print my name, right, you'll see it, the value of name is Rahi, right? Um, so now that we got that, um, okay, so next let's, so let's just say now you want to get age, right? Age is going to be an integer data type, typically you might want a more precise input, but typically you're going to go with a, um, a integer. So I'm going to go ahead and take input again, and I'll say how old are you, right? So now you'll see if I do, uh, I don't know, if I put 15 in, right? You'll see how it's a string. If I There's a function, another function that's built into Python called type, which allows you to figure out the type of an object and you'll see it's str for string, right? So if I go back up here, how do I make this into an integer, right? So there, this is called ca casting, and we'll probably use this much more later, later. but um, for now, you just uh, use this function, right? Int, and you put whatever you're trying to convert into an int inside of those parentheses. So in this case, we're trying to convert the int, which was a string, into the integer. Now. If the user doesn't type in something that is an integer, that could result in an error, but we'll figure out how to take care of that later, right? Okay, so if I type this, now if I type in 15, right? And if I look at age, you see there's no quotes around it. 
meaning that it is a numerical data type now, right? Again, if I run the, run the type function on this, right? Type age, um, it's gonna return an int. So you can see it's an integer. Okay. So that's pretty much it for the data types and variables. Again, if you missed anything, if this was too fast or something, you can go back to the Python script in our GitLab, and that's on our website. You can find the link to that. Uh, and you can find this lesson, it's called data types and variables.py. Actually, Ryan, if you can go ahead and link that in the chat, that would be uh, good. Um, okay, then, um, uh, the specifically for this script right here, the data types and variables.py. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, so that's that's it for data types and variables for now. Uh, next thing we're gonna move to is gonna be the. Um, yeah. Okay. So Ryan just posted in the resources chat. Um, okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to comparison operators. Um, again, this is also in our GitLab. Um, it's all in the same folder. So if you go into that folder that Ryan just linked, uh, and if you go out one directory, um, there will be uh, the entire folder is called basic Python. Uh, and inside of there, there's another one called conditional operators.py. Uh, that's what we're going to be going over right now, right? So, um, okay. Uh, so Booleans, right? Uh, if you remember from last time, there's two Booleans, right? True and there's false. So now we're gonna get into how we can do stuff with this with these booleans, right? And if you took computer science, you should, I think, I think you should probably uh, understand some of this stuff. Um, if not, this is a boolean logic and you'll probably cover it. Um, so I've created some nice uh, ASCII tables over here. So I'm gonna pull this up right here and let me zoom in. Um, okay. So you'll see like right here, right? Uh, I have this table right here. So uh, there's three basic operators that we're gonna go over for now, right? Uh, not, and, and or, right? So uh, let me put that back over uh, there. So, um, okay. So you remember again, right? So the, let's just say, I, so in the example that I gave, I said the uh, earth, Earth is uh, flat, right? So you could set this to some value, true, true, or you could set it to false, right? Uh, so the first one we're gonna cover is not, right? Because that's the simplest one, right? You just uh, you just say, so if you say not true, right? That's the same thing as false, right? So if I do this right now, uh, and, okay. So you'll see that evaluates to false. So what that means is that, uh, you take this not true, and uh, whenever it, Python evaluates this, it's gonna turn that into a false, right? Uh, and you see that it evaluates to false right here. Um, so now, uh, now we're gonna do the and, right? So the example I gave here was has license, and that's we'll set it for to true, and we'll say has car, and that's gonna be false for now, right? So we'll say, we'll create another one called can drive, right? So if you have a license, sorry, okay. If you have a license and you can, and you have a car, then you can drive. Otherwise you pretty much won't be able to drive, right? But you have to have both a car and a license, right? If you don't have a car, you, you can't, you don't have anything to drive in. If you don't have a license, you're not legally allowed to drive, right? So yeah, we'll say that you have to ha have a license, right? So it has license. And uh, so in, Py in Java, if you already learned this, uh, you'll you'll use the ampersand uh, twice. But in Python, um, it's a little bit more human read readable, and uh, like you can almost read some Python code like it's English. So um, uh, th this is and. So it's you, you just say you type the word and. So has license and has car, right? So obviously we can evaluate this to false because this is true and this is false, right? So if either one of them is false, right, then um, then it's false, basically, right? So has license was true, but has car was false, so can drive was false, right? Okay, next, or. Or is, again, type just like the English word or, right? So we'll do another example here. So studied was false, uh, and then cheated 
is true, right? So we'll say if you pass the test, right? Um, so you had, had to either uh, study or you cheated, right? Um, so uh, if you evaluate this, it'll be true, right? Because one of these things was true, one of them was false, but with or it doesn't matter. If one of them is true, then um, the whole thing becomes true. Uh, again, if we um, pull this thing back up, um, okay, right here, uh, okay. So the, uh, I have A and I have B, right? Uh, so A is true, B is true, then A and B is true, and A or B is true, right? If I have A and B as true and false respectively, then I have false and true for and and or respectively, right? Uh, so you can see this table right here. Again, this is in the in the GitLab, um, but um, this is how it evaluates. So you can see like true, true. So true and true is true, and true or true is also true, right? True and false, that's false, but true or false is true. So um, you probably want to try and understand those because those can be um, really important. Uh, okay, so, uh, and then you can get much more complicated statements, right? So if, I'm, if I say like true and false, right? So you can also use parentheses uh, in order to, to do these, right, uh, to just like you would do in math operations where you'd use the parentheses to, um, to communicate that uh, a certain operation comes before another operation. Uh, here you're gonna um, use parentheses to do, do pretty much the same thing. So, uh, okay, so you'll see right here, what's gonna happen is the, the parentheses are gonna evaluate to, to false, right, because true and false is false right uh, or not false or true right so this is going to basically be false and then um, so then it'll basically be false or true because not false becomes true or true right so false or true or true so false or true because you go from left to right just like in uh, PEMDAS right so false or true becomes true then you basically are left with true or true which evaluates a true so right here, you'll see that this becomes true. Uh, again, in the GitLab, uh, I wrote this out. So if you, if that was too fast for you, or you didn't understand, uh, I have it um, written out there. So you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, okay. So that's basically Boolean operations, right? And uh, you can do uh, a lot with this, but um, we're also going to be working with numbers, right? So. Uh, we'll go back to age equals 15, right? I think we already did that earlier, but anyways. So um, we'll say is 15, right? So, okay, now there's gonna be a couple more, right? So there's um, gonna be equals equals, right? So that means if you're checking that if the two values are equal to each other, then there's not equal, which is gonna, we'll, which we'll get to next. Uh, then there's greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, or less than, equal to, right? So we'll get to all the other ones uh, in a second, but um, for now equals, right? So is 15 or equals age equals equals 15, right? So I can put this in parentheses just so that way it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, so basically what are we saying here, right? We're saying, um, we're, what we're saying is that uh, age equals equals 15. So equals equals means is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right. So what we just designated over here that age equals 15, right? So uh, if you substitute the value here, right, you get 15 equals 15. And 15 equals 15, that's that's true, right? Because 15 does equal 15. So is 15 should evaluate to, to true, right? So we'll see, is 15. And you'll see that it's evaluated to true. Okay, so now we'll keep, we can do the opposite, right? So we can also check if something is not equal, right? Uh, is not 15, right? So this will set it equal to uh, age not equal to 15, right? So you can imagine again that, you know, so, okay, this is a sign for not equals, right? The exclamation mark means not, right? So this basically, what this means is that is the thing on the left not equal to the thing on the right? So 
age is 15, so we're asking is 15 not equal to 15? And that's false, right? Because 15 is equal to 15. So again, if I go ahead and type uh, is not 15, right? I get false. So uh, another way that you could also write this, right? You could go back and you could say uh, that this is equal, right? So you could check if this is equal and then you could stick a not in front of here, right? And that would be the same thing. So again, if I check the value right there, it's still false, right? Um, so now, uh, so now next one we're going to do greater than, right? So um, I don't know, uh, could be teen, right? Uh, teenager, right? So uh, if the age is, I'll put that in parentheses. Okay, so if age is greater than twelve, right? So that means if they're older than twelve, or I guess we could probably say uh, greater than or equal to thirteen, right? Um, because once you're 13, then I guess you could become a teenager. Uh, so uh, then could be teen becomes true, right? Because 15 is greater than or equal to 13, right? Uh, OK, then uh, we'll say cannot drink, right? Uh, so if you're younger than um, if you're younger than 21, then you can't drink, right? So if the age is less than 21, right, then you can't drink. So OK. So that's that's uh, true. That so, so this person would not be able to drink, right? Because they're, they're 15. Um, okay. So uh, the next one is is alive, right? So if you're uh -huh. oh in the chat oh. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I'll go. I'll go into that. So, uh, XOR is um, XOR is kind of like OR, but you can't have it to where both of them are true, right? So if I say true or true, right, that's true. But if I say true, XOR true, right, that's going to be false. Uh, now this is called a bitwise operator, so you can apply it on things other than booleans, but um, that gets into some more math and stuff. Um, so, okay, true or true XOR true is false. If I say uh, true XOR false, that's going to be true because, so basically XOR means if uh, only one of them is true, right? Or you could think of it as uh, they have to be different from each other, right? So uh, in terms of Booleans and other things, it could be, it, it's, it's a little bit different. But um, okay, so true XOR false, and then I could also say false. XOR true, that's also going to be true. False, XOR false. So this is going to be false, right? Again, it's the same thing you could say. So like false and false are the same. So it's going to be false. But uh, really, it's because um, like an or false or false is false, right? So OK, that's uh, XOR. Um, OK, so now we left off on less than. And then you can also do. Uh, obviously greater than, so like uh, I could just say quickly, age greater than zero, right? Uh, age was 15, so that's going to be true. Okay, then, uh, so you have to be 18 to vote. So if age is less than or equal to uh, 17, right? So then that's going to be true. That means that you can't vote, right? Uh, okay, so then you can also... Uh, another cool thing about Python is that you can uh, chain these together, right? So you could say, uh, so you could say, is this person a teenager, right? Uh, so then you could say 13 less than equal to age less than equal to uh, 18, right? Or 19. Uh, okay. So now is teen, right? That's true because the person is between 13 and 19, right? You could also swap this out for less than, or you could swap this one out for uh, only less than, not less than, equal to. Uh, but that's a cool thing in Python. Uh, otherwise, uh, what you would typically do is uh, age less than equal, or 13. I guess you would say age greater than or equal to 13 and age um, less than or equal to 19, right? And that would be same thing, true, right? OK. So OK, next. So right now, we've just been uh, evaluating these uh, Boolean statements in uh, one line or storing them in variables and stuff, right? So uh, 
now we're going to actually put them to use, right? So we're going to use if statements, right? So uh, if the condition is true, then um, if the condition is true, then you run the code. Otherwise, you don't run the code, right? So if the person, I think we did is teen, right? Yeah. So okay, if the person is a teen teenager, right? Uh, okay, then we can just have it print out that uh, you are a teen. Okay. So if we run that, then it'll print out that you're a teen because it's um, it's uh, it's true. So now and then also we can always we can also apply all of our uh, rules in here. So like. Uh, cannot vote and cannot drink, right? So if you think about that, um, what that means is, so if the person can't vote, then they must be below 18, right? If they can't drink, then they must be below 21. So uh, you could say that they're not uh, an adult, right? So you could say, uh, you, uh, you are not an adult, okay. Uh, Oh, okay, I guess I never okay. cannot vote equals, which we'll set that to false, right? Or I could say uh, age uh, less than uh, 18, right? Okay. Okay, so there you go. It says you're not an adult. Okay. Um, so next, so that's, uh, that's if. Next, we're going to do else. So else, uh, if and else uh, are chained together. So we can say, uh, if the person is a teenager, then we print that uh, you are 18, right? Uh, otherwise, we'll, so otherwise meaning else, right? So uh, else, uh, you want to print that uh, the person is not a teen, for example, right? You are not 18, okay. So there you go. In this case, it's going to print that you are. But if I set is teen equals to false, then that's going to say that you are not a teen, right? OK. So now, else if, right? Um, so you can type in else if like that. Or you can type in el uh, else if like this, l if, like a shorthand, right? So uh, if you cannot vote and you uh, cannot drink, right, then uh, uh, this person's not an adult, right, like we said earlier. So you are not an adult. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, else, else if, or elif. Now, over here, this is treated, this is pretty much treated like a if statement, like the syntax is the same except uh, this this will only run if this evaluates to false, right? So uh, it's chained together just like the else, right? So uh, if you cannot drink and uh, you also can vote, right? So, okay. Then that means that you are between 18 and 20, right? So if you think about that, um, so if you cannot drink, that means that you're below 21. And not cannot vote, that means that you can vote, that means that you're above 18, right? So uh, that means that you would be between 18 and you uh, and 21, right? So else, so finally, this is the last case scenario, right? So uh, if um, the person doesn't fall in any of the other categories, these both evaluate to false, right? Um, then it's going to be, uh, then it's going to be, uh, you are an adult, right? Okay. So yeah, you are not an adult. Because if we um, evaluate these, then um, uh, the person, uh, I think it was cannot vote, right? Uh, cannot, yeah, yeah. These were, I think, both false, right? Because the person was 15. So these both evaluate to false. So the first one goes right here. Uh, actually, this is not a mechanical keyboard. This is a membrane keyboard. <laughs> um, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's a bit weird. Uh, 
Okay, so that's um, all we have for conditionals um, for now. So, uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, is there anything I forgot to cover, Ryan? Yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't think we should start. We'll just, uh, you can go ahead and um, pick up on loops next time. So Ryan, uh, Ryan will be teaching next week. Yeah. Uh, and also, we're starting to post these on our website too so you can watch them there as well. Yeah, okay, go, uh, go ahead. Uh, okay, so, right, so, okay, so first, you have um, okay. So there's a you know you have PEMDAS in uh, in uh, your like for arithmetic you use uh, PEMDAS. Um, so for Boolean uh, it's called Boolean algebra, right? So you have uh, similar things. Um, so it's in PEMDAS you have parentheses, exponents, mul uh, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction, right? Um, so here we have, uh, let me create the screen, okay. So here you have um, <coughs> uh, parentheses still come first, right? Uh, and then you're gonna have, um, then you have uh, and, sorry, first you have not, right? So if you negate the, if you negate the Boolean, that's gonna come after parentheses. Then you have and, and then you have or, right? Um, so that's the operator pre precedence. Um, XOR would come um, between, um, I think it would be on the same level as NOT um, because it's a bitwise operator. Um, so yeah, let me try and pull that up. Uh, Okay, so right here, uh, can you guys see this? So yeah, exp 
exponents come first. <laughs> um, well, parentheses and then exponents, kind of like you would expect um, in the uh, in the um, in the PEMDAS, right? So parentheses, then exponents, and then you have your so you can um, make a integer or a, a basically a numerical data type positive or negative, but you can also go ahead and do a bitwise negative. So those also come next. Um, then you have your multiplication, division, integer division, uh, modulo, those operators, right? Uh, then you have addition, subtraction. Then you have the, uh, we, won't, we haven't covered those. Uh, then you have your bitwise operators, right? Uh, and then you have your comparisons, like the equals, not equals, greater than, less than, all those things. Um, and then the uh, the not, and then you have the uh, and, and then you have the or. So um, it's gonna that's the order that's gonna evaluate it. Uh, I think Ryan's gonna send the link, right? Uh, yeah, I think he sent the link right there. So yeah. yeah. Mine is at 47. Yeah, we can do that. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>